there, welcome. Now, I just finished repotting this beauty, and I thought it'd be a great time for us to do a little video to talk about this fascinating plant. Now, if you're as fascinated as I am by the incredible diversity of life that surrounds us in this wonderful, sometimes bizarre, natural world that we live in, then you, my friends, you belong here with me. I make videos on all sorts of facets of nature, from aquariums, vivariums, all sorts of DIY projects, reptiles, isopods, insects, arachnids, all sorts of bizarre and unique plants, and I try to do something, I try to dig a little bit deeper into the science behind it all. Now, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, as well as ring that little notification bell. You'll always be kept up to date when I upload new content. This wonderful plant is a Diefenbachia. More correctly, Diefenbachia seguin. But it's more often referred to in the gardening world by a rather unique name of dumb cane. This evergreen ornamental, this is a tropical treasure and it hails from the warm rainforest of Brazil. And it was named in honor of Sir J. Diefenbach of pioneer in tropical plant cultivation in the early 1800s at the gardens of the Royal Palace Schönbrunn in Vienna. It's a very popular, somewhat easily grown indoor house plant in temperate zones where it's grown for its obviously striking foliage. It has been in cultivations for hundreds of years and there are many cultivars available all over the world but they have made it into somewhat more of a compact growing form. Striking variations to the colors, the patterns on the leaves, regardless, they all grow the same. But more on care in a little bit. Now, people don't readily, when they think of plants, they don't think of them as aggressive nor violent. Perhaps consider a cactus, or the thorns on a rose bush, perhaps. The underside of an Amazon, the amazing Amazon Victoria lily from the Amazon basis. Now these images may bring images of aggressiveness, but these structures on these plants are all natural methods through evolution of protecting itself from either environmental factors or in the case of, say, cacti, for aiding in the channeling of whatever moisture that they can acquire in their incredibly desiccate environments, or from herbivorous species or plant eaters that intend to make a meal of said plant. As example, the manatees or the giant paku fish of the Amazon which would otherwise make very, very short work of the tender leaves of the beautiful water Amazon lily plant. Another form of protection is chemical, and the plant kingdom truly has mastered this form of warfare, or more truthfully, deterrent. How about poison ivy? It's a plant species that plagues many all over North America and Europe. Simply by touching the leaves of this plant, one could get horrible rashes that can blister and ooze. Or how about my favorite, and one of the most unique in plant toxicology, the manchineal, aka aptly named the tree of death. I just brushed my head against one when I was in Florida, and I had a rash for several hours, just touching the tree. In Australia, there is even a plant, Dendrocinide morodes, that is so toxic that if you are stung by the hair-like structures on it leaves, it leaves, dare I say, the victim wishing for death. And this plant is actually very common in their northeastern rainforest. Plants truly can be scary. Now, just as there are many plants that are extremely toxic, there are just as many that offer all forms of pharmacological benefits, most of which honestly have not even been found. And with the rampant destruction of our global rainforest, those benefits will probably never be found. Now let's get back to the subject at hand. This guy, the Diefenbachia, for it too holds a really dark secret, and its common name moniker gives us a nod towards that secret. The Diefenbachia is truly a toxic plant. All plants and all parts of this plant are toxic, and they can be transmitted through the sap, and which is known immediately irritable should it come into contact with the skin. They actually recommend you use gloves when you handle it. Now the real problem with this plant, and has posed for many, many years, is by children or pets chewing or biting the leaves. The sap contains calcium oxalate crystals, and these small needle-like crystals can cause massive damage, albeit on maybe a microscopic level, to the soft tissues of the mouth. 
And this allows the entrance of all those toxic substances into the body. Now, symptoms include mild to severe immediate pain, rapid swelling of the mouth and throat area, and in severe cases, swelling can actually limit the ability to speak, hence the common name, dumb cane. Ingesting any part of this plant can then spread the symptoms to other areas and causing even further damage. Symptoms can actually linger for several days following poisoning. Now, I fully intended for this video, I actually intended to brave it, give it a go, and uh, have a little chew just to try and test the effects. I thought it'd be kind of humorous for the video. However, my wife, my father, and my doctor strongly advised against it. So sadly, I'm not going to go and chew it. No dum-dum for bigs. So yes, please enjoy these plants for their beauty. They're absolutely striking plants, but always respect them for what they are. Living things, very capable of defending themselves should they feel threatened. Now, cultivation of a Diefenbach is fairly straightforward, hence its popularity. Medium to bright indirect light, well-drained, humid-rich soil. Allow it to slightly dry between waterings. And honestly, most cultivars available today in garden centers are far more compact in growth, as such as this one, uh, than the original or wild forms. Wild forms, the leaves, all similar in appearance, could have been stretched out to 24 inches in size whereas the compact forms of the plants generally stay under the four foot range in size, roughly about the size of this guy. He might get a little bit taller, but it makes an ideal size for a houseplant. Now, I remember back in the day, my father actually worked as a principal at a school, and they had a Diefenbachia growing on the main level, and it was just in a pot and a single stalk, and it reached up, up almost two and a half stories to these giant windows at the top. It reached up to find the better spot where the light where it liked it best. Now, Diefenbachias, they can flower and they can produce fruit when grown as a houseplant, but honestly, both are fairly somewhat insignificant compared to that striking foliage. And that's what they're really grown for. Propagation of these plants is really, really easy, honestly. Should your plant get too leggy, which this one had done before, basically, you're just going to cut it, you're just going to cut the stalk, and you're just going to replant that stalk in that nice, rich, humic soil. You want to make sure that you keep that soil evenly moist while the roots develop. I find it to be a truly fascinating plant, and it's truly a botanical treasure. So thank you kindly, my friends, for watching, and until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Take care. I guess now's a good time as any for a shameless plug. One of the new designs, May the Plants Be With You, t-shirts, hoodies, whatever you want, all available from the Mad Aquarist Teespring Shop. Link in the description.